Often when traveling, one doesn't always have the luxury of time or perfect weather for that matter to capture an image. And it's on these particular occasions that Photoshop can come in quite handy. If photographing in the middle of a bright sunny day or at night time when the lighting conditions aren't optimal and the dynamic range is quite high, photos can present as extremely contrasty where the highlights are blown out and the shadows are bogged down with little or no visible detail. When faced with an image of this description, you can't really go past using the shadows and highlights adjustment in Photoshop to balance out the difference in tonal relationships. Shadows and Highlights is located under the main navigational menu underneath Image, Adjustments, Shadows and Highlights. Now you'll also notice that there isn't currently a Layers option for Shadows and Highlights, so you'll actually be applying your Shadows and Highlights adjustment directly to an image layer. Now if you've spent quite a bit of time using Adobe's Camera Raw, you'll notice that Shadows and Highlights looks very similar to the Recovery and Fill sliders. When you first open this adjustment, you'll find a slider for the shadows and a slider for the highlights, which are the basic options that are available to you. Now, as you increase the percentage of the shadow slider, you start to notice that the actual shadows begin to lighten. And this is very evident when I just turn off the uh, preview checkbox, as you can see from the original photograph. Now, when you actually start to increase the amounts with both the shadows and highlights, you want to be very cautious as to how much you actually apply because uh, a certain amount uh, will look fine, but after a certain point, the image can, the images can look uh, very um, strange as if you've just overworked them a little bit too much. So you just want to take that uh, into account when you're actually using the shadows and highlights adjustment. But as you can see here, just by making slight adjustment to the shadows uh, with regards to the amount, adds that additional bit of detail that was missing before. And it's the same for highlights. You can take what is essentially this lovely sort of white um, little dinghy here and start to increase the amount. And you'll notice that the highlights values actually start to uh, get pulled back and end up being sort of lighter grays as you increase the, the value of the uh, amount slider. Now these options are great, but I find in most cases I need more control of exactly how these adjustments are actually made. So by clicking on the Show More Options checkbox, you will be presented with an array of different sliders that control different things. Now you'll notice now with the Shadows and Highlights, we have three uh, different slider controls. We have the Amount, which we've already played around with, we have the Tonal Width, and we have the Radius. Now the tonal width controls the range of tones that are modified when using shadows and highlights. So smaller values actually restrict the adjustments to darker regions for the shadow correction and lighter regions for the highlight corrections. Whereas larger values actually increase the range of tones and uh, adjust further into the midtones. So as I increase the tonal width for the shadows, you'll notice that the adjustment that is made is also applying it to sort of some of the slightly darker gray areas in the photograph as well as you can see here just around sort of this water level here but if i start to restrict that you'll notice that the actual adjustment uh, will only actually occur in the darker shadow areas so that's something really you've got to be careful with so in most cases i will play around with that in order to find the right balance that i'm after now underneath tonal width we have radius. Now radius simply controls the size of the local neighborhood around each pixel being corrected um, for either the shadows or the highlights. Now it's best to experiment once again with this adjustment as the results can vary according to the type of subject matter in your image. So underneath both shadows and highlights we have the adjustments uh, block. Now essentially the adjustments gives us options for brightness and options for the mid-tone contrast. Now brightness will allow us essentially to adjust the um, mid-tone point of the image. So you can actually start to lighten the image off. Now if you had a color image you'd actually notice that this would actually not be brightness, this would actually be um, a color correction. A color correction uh, is simply a 
uh, a slider that adds saturation to your image, which in most cases is sort of needed, especially with color, color images, where you start to lighten off the shadows, which can begin to look washed out. So you'll notice that that will actually change according to whether you're using a black and white image or whether you're using a color image. Now underneath that we have midtone contrast and that does exactly what it says. It essentially just increases or decreases the amount of contrast around the midtone areas and that will actually exclude the highlights and shadows uh, with this particular adjustment. You'll also find just underneath the midtone contrast that we have the black clip and the white clip. Now this will allow you to determine where the white point and the black point in your image will actually begin with this particular adjustment. Now this is something that you really want to be careful with, um, essentially because by adjusting this you can really start to lose detail, especially in the shadows and also the highlights. So you just want to make sure that you, you, you don't make too much of an adjustment with the black clip and the white clip, otherwise you will uh, end up with results that will lose detail in your photograph. So usually you'll only adjust these values if you have a really flat, low contrast image and you're really looking to sort of um, bring it to life by adding some more contrast to it by reducing the um, re reducing the histogram essentially because you're, you're basically pulling in the black point and the highlight point which would be um, 0 and 255 and actually setting them at a different uh, clipping point for your image. Now underneath the uh, clipping points here we have save as defaults. Now this essentially if you find that you uh, are sort of happy with a general setting that you're using quite often with your images and you're happy with uh, all the different range of settings that you set up then you can actually save these as a default uh, so that next time you come to open up shadows and highlights these will be here for you to actually uh, in, in order to save you time essentially. You can also choose to actually save them as a preset here, um, which also then you can actually load up later on if, say for example, it's a particular lighting situation or a studio setup that you only use once in a while, then you can actually save those presets and come back to them uh, in a future uh, editing session. So at the end of the day, I would make every conscious effort to actually utilize Camera Raw's recovery and fill light sliders prior to ever thinking about even using the shadows and highlights adjustment in Photoshop. But where it does come in very handy is when I'm working with images that I've scanned directly from films such as transparency, color negative or black and white film and I'm looking for that extra bit of detail in either my shadows or highlights.